Morning, everybody. Okay, I'm going to go over some comments and some questions from people, from my subscribers, okay? So the first one I want to talk to about is Creative Lady, and this isn't a question, but she is agreeing with one of my videos. I can't remember which. can't really see. I've got one contact out here. I messed up I, so I'm not reading quite as well. But listen, what I wanted to go over is she says, yes, amen, and blessings. Now, blessings are fine, fine. Blessings originated really with um, earth magic people. But I wanted to let you guys know that the word amen is actually very, very, very old. That's way, way back, and what do they call that? I think they called those people the Anunnaki. I believe but anyway it was instituted all the way back then and it actually is a way that they created that whatever you're talking about if you end it with amen it immediately takes that energy line and it attaches it to them now the Anunnaki were are were are no such thing as time um, part of what I consider geckos so you're you're going to get attached to gecko energy. I was raised by a preacher, so ever so often I'll catch myself saying amen. And then I have to immediately take that energy back, move it over where I want it to. So just a heads up there, using the term amen will immediately take whatever it is you're talking about, no matter what it is, and it'll take your energy and it'll attach it to the gecko side of this game. And it will stay attached. So every time you've ever said it, all of those times it's been attached and that energy drain is going from you to them. So for anybody who has ever used the word amen, you want to stop this video right now. You want to state an intention. And what I say to do is you can like close your eyes. And what I do is I see myself spinning. And um, any of those little lines of energy, I spin them back to where they come from. Don't get angry, don't get mad, I just send them back from where, to where they come from. Now, it's it's pretty heavy duty when you say the word amen because it's been used for a long time. And so they've gotten very good at that particular little maneuver that they do. But in truth, anytime you react with anyone else, any other human, in any other being in human form, anytime you react to them 99.9% .9 of the time, you have now connected a depending upon how much interaction you have with them there is a line like think of it like a thread an energy thread sometimes it can get as big as a rope uh sometimes it can get as huge like a huge beam of light but most of the time if you go through the checkout line and you say hey to the checkout person there's a thin line that goes between the two of you that's developed now the older you get the more of these threads that people don't know they're doing it and they start to accumulate. One of the reasons why humans age is because they don't know that that's happening so they don't spin it off. They don't send that energy back to where it came from. So it's just a tiny little, most of the time, drain because most humans are very, very vampirical because they don't understand that they've got a direct line to source. So they're always looking for... Uh, what looks like approval from other beings, but what that plays out as being is there's an energy thread that gets attached to the person you're talking to, and you do it too. You'll like attach to them and just pull energy from them, and they attach to you and pull energy from you. Now, since we're all one, big picture, nobody cares. But from a human standpoint, what, how that plays out, the older you get, the more of these attachments that you have, and you'll pull back your own automatically eventually. But the ones that are attached from other people, especially the little ones like check out, just saying hi to somebody, those aren't spun back. <clears throat> and individually, they don't do much damage. But after decades and decades of doing it, eventually that energy drain, you'll start to feel it. So older people will have less energy. And they don't know why. And what they'll do is they'll say, oh, well, you're getting older and science says that things start to fail. Well, the reason why things start to fail is because you've got so much of an energy draw from all these tiny little 
threads of energy that you have attached over decades and decades with arbitrary people. Now, the ones that are big, like maybe a husband or wife that you divorced, that divorce and the whole experience of it, even though that is a major beam of light that's, that you're going to them and they're going to you, and in our society, we are told that you want to marry somebody that will help you be better or do something for you. Well, what that does is it attaches a very large beam of energy to that person that you're drawing from them and they'll do the same thing with you usually it happens in a wedding ceremony and the two of you will draw from each other and of course this is doomed to fail uh, because there will be times when that draw because it's so big is too hard on the other person and they will start fighting they'll they'll start failing physically they'll start fighting that now how it plays out is other things will happen. They'll they'll go cheat on you or they'll stop paying attention to you. You won't feel, you'll feel that depletion of energy that you're vampirically drawing from the other person. So you'll feel like, oh, they don't love me anymore. Um, and maybe the person will go, well, I know they're cheating on me, which of course law of attraction works and they will be. And such until a divorce happens. Once a divorce happens, that energy is cut goes back to the, each individual person and that's on major things like mm, husband wives boyfriend girlfriend sons daughters parents kids um, employee employers all the majors that's kind of a little bit of how they play out but what people don't understand is there's also tiny little threads of everyday contact so and I think probably a lot of the Old waves have, have told people to, you know, to cleanse or send back energy. I, I don't know what other people say, but I spin. Because to me, it's easier for me to close my eyes and visualize myself spinning. And then when I'm spinning, I just say all the energy that has been attached to me inadvertently over the day, I send it back to the beings that it came from. Send it all, everybody back. I got my own. I don't need to be vampiring from anybody else and I don't need them vampiring off me so I'll spin it back and then I concentrate on pulling my energy from source energy and I also do that through the central sun and sun and then into my high heart and I work at getting my energy that way not from vampiring it off of other people okay now that kind of did a side light with the whole amen thing but <coughs> it's important information nonetheless that you guys should know about okay and the next one is from John Otto and he would love for to see me talk more about Pandora of Avatar being a potential 5D world um, Pandora of course without then he says without the animals trying to eat you. And absolutely, Pandora, without the killing of animals back and forth, is very like 5D. The difference is that you don't have to, you know, they don't have, to, you don't have to see it, the connection, you just know it, although you can see it if you want to. But Pandora is dead on um, accurate uh, in many, many ways, how they interact with the animals and they can talk to the animals and the ICU thing, and oh yeah, there's a lot of that. That That's not another world. That's the way Gaia will be. Um, that's pretty much how most of the planets are in 5D, because it's just a understanding of the oneness, so you can communicate with everything. And because of that, um, the only difference is, and that's pretty accurate of low 5D, as you move up, then you'll be able to transform everything and everything else is transformed so a tree might become a bird and fly away uh, you might become a bird and fly away for that matter so the actual concepts behind Pandora and Avatar are very accurate uh, I think we went to that movie and uh, we were in Houston and we went to one of the higher dollar ones you know 3d surround sound it was pricey but it was so good, we walked around, turned right around, Stephanie and I did. We turned right around and watched it two more times and paid the price because it was so, 
so accurate. And also, um, that's very accurate to the kind of place that Stephanie likes to spend most of her time when she's outside of this game. Uh, definitely more physical than I would care to uh, experience and more physical than Michelle tends to experience. But Stephanie likes uh, more physicality. So it's really, really accurate for her. So she really loves that movie. Um, she especially loves the movie, as do I, because the humans lose, which, against, uh, Pandora, which they absolutely would, but, of course, they couldn't get there to begin with, but, uh, definitely, it was good for her. So, yes, Pandora is, lots of those concepts in that movie, Avatar, are, are absolutely accurate. Okay, can't wait to get there. So, it's a good way to start, if you could just block out all of the drama with the humans and animals eating each other. The rest of it is very, very accurate. Okay, now we're going to go to Cher Williams. Uh, blah, blah, blah. She says that, of course, I'm Aquarian, and of course I'm Aquarian. Now, uh, she says, of course you're Aquarius, that she's drawn to Aquarius. Yeah, we are weird people. I love that about us. Now, I've done a video on that at this point you do not have to use any of the astrological um, energies that at this point you can you can take them all now i lean into my aquarius nature i've also got a capricorn moon which is where i spent most of my time for about 15 years yeah, that's that's easy for me to do because i'm also my skin suit is germanic so that very business-like, get a job done, no emotions, I can put that skin suit with my Capricorn moon and, I mean, really get stuff done. But I'm cold as ice. Cold as ice. Whereas, it's very different from my Aquarius side. So, once I retired and started this other game, I really lean into my Aquarius nature. Now, over the years, the Capricorn keep kept my feet on the ground because my Aquarius self will tend to just fly up into the clouds and not be here at all. So, what I do is I now lean into my Aquarius side. But you don't have to do that. It doesn't matter anymore. You are a god. You're all of those things. And everybody's chart has all of those energies. It's just that you were born with stronger energies to be where you were when you were born and to get the the experience or the job done that you wanted to get done when you were here. But now you can go through all the signs and pick and choose whatever ones you want. It's a good way of seeing in paper form what energies are available in physical form is so you can see it with your own eyes. So you can go through and pick and choose exactly what you want. You don't have, you're not stuck with uh, certain ones that you were in 3D. You now can start picking whatever you want. So don't get caught up in the astrology game. That can get you stuck in 4D really, really hard. Um, so just know that it was something that we used to get to 3D. And now, as a creator god, you can have whatever you want. Okay? All right. Now, moving up. Let's see. Cher Williams says... Let's see, what video is this? Let me click on it here, guys. Bear with me. My internet is not super fast out here, as most of you know. When did humans hit low 3D? Okay. Alright, when did humans hit low 3D? And her statement is... That was my experience, brought up Catholic, then declared myself an atheist for many years. NDEs came into my awareness a few years ago, and I became aware we are so much more than these physical bodies here. So my heart is feeling so open for the first time ever, and I just love everyone, knowing they are magnificent spirits, magnificent gods, gods, not spirits, gods. We are gods. Say that to yourself. Get used to it. Understand it. Believe it. Know it. And now Christianity is coming into my awareness and fear is creeping back in. 
just like what if there is a hell and all the indie ears were being deceived by Satan as a Christian would say oh yeah they absolutely say that to me mm -hmm. that's why I quit talking to them oh about a thousand times I heard that and all I can tell you share is when I died and time collapsed and it felt like I was there for oh easily a hundred years and I came back a hundred years easily or more it was a long time and I came back still to this day every moment of what I experienced is clear as a bell I can recount it now today I am 59 years old I'm almost 60 years old and I couldn't tell you what I did last week to the moment to moment but I can recall everything that happened to me when I died to me that's saying something and the second thing I could say is all I can say to you is uh, when you're dead you know where you are you it is more real than this ever dreamed of being this seems very much like from that perspective when you die this seems very much like a game doesn't feel real it's really hard for me to take it seriously I know it's intense physicality and I have to take it seriously because it is physicality and it can be dangerous but the feeling of it here is very much more like a game or a dream um, I know it's real I know it's not a dream I, I know that but oh, outside this game uh, that is the truth, and it makes so much sense whenever you've been there. Now, n I don't know what other indie ears would do, but I can assure you that it doesn't matter how many times anyone else looks at me and says, oh, well, it was the Satan deceiving you a whole line. I know different. And all I can tell you is you can't prove when you love somebody. You can't. Uh, if I went to you and said, well, you don't know if that's love, prove it. Well, you know when you're in love with somebody. You know when you love someone or something. You know that. It's deep into your soul. You just know it. Well, dying and knowing that over there is not faked by any kind of being. Now, in my case, I was lucky. I went beyond Satan, beyond Lucifer, and way outside this game. So there is no... Outside this game, there is nobody trying to deceive anybody. Uh, because it's just not done. That's a part of this game and du duality. That whole deceiving and there being two sides. Uh, that's all a part of this game. And I went so far that I could turn around and see that. So in my case, it isn't even a possibility. And I was raised by a Church of Christ preacher who was way into hellfire and brimstone. So there was definitely, I had the history of being scared to death of going to hell and uh, so I assure you there is no yeah no Satan is deceiving it, me I don't know about all the other indie years I can't speak for them but I do know what happened to me and there was no I went way way outside Satan and I had a long talk with Satan so um, I even know where he's coming from and I um totally met and talked to Lucifer, which from my estimation are two different characters in the game, and then I went way outside of that. So, um, I can't tell you what to believe, but from my perspective, uh, there absolutely is a hell, but only people that go there, if they believe they're going to go there, because you create what you're going to experience after you leave here. Well, you you created what you've had here, too. You, you are a creator god everything you experience is ultimately your creation okay now let's see what else okay sometimes I think this is happening to get me to lower my vibrations and then other times the fear grips me and I think well maybe Jesus is trying to save me by putting the videos and those people into my path okay uh, Jesus isn't trying to do anything uh, for you or to you, neither is Satan for that matter. Uh, you are bringing these things into your life for your own reasons. So that's how you need to look at it. Ultimately working out that situation between Satan and Jesus and whether you are in fear or not, that's really up to you. Nobody can make you fearful but you. 
Nobody can make you unfearful but you. So it doesn't matter what society or what religions do. Ultimately, it's up to you to respond to them. Nobody can get in your head and go, oh, okay, now you're going to feel fear. No, you decide to do that. I'm going to feel happy. You decide to do that. And people need to start taking responsibility for that. No, Nothing is making you fearful. Nothing is making you happy. Nothing is, nothing and no one is making you do any of those things. Nothing can. You decide, you know, there's a guy in front of you with a gun pointed at you. You decide to be fearful. Uh, another person could decide to get angry and give him a karate kick and flip the gun around to him. They do it on on shows all the time. So, so you see the same circumstance, dark alley, guy jumps out with a, with a gun, points it at your head and says, I'm going to kill you. One person might get terrified. Another might get, oh, well, of course, it's it would happen to me. Another person would go, oh, hell no. This isn't going to happen to me. You are not going to. Somebody else might not think at all. They may just rush the person. You see, nobody decides how you're going to respond. You're the one that decides. The circumstance is just the circumstance. The person is just the person. How you respond is totally up to you. That is your God self. And that's what... Now, a lot of things in society have tried to control that response in you and convince you of that. But the truth is that they've never been able to do it. They never will because that part of your God self can nev never be controlled. It can be bent, but ultimately, um, ultimately that response has always been, will always be your choice. All right. Then she says, this game is so messed up. Well, let's stop right there. Uh, this game isn't messed up. This game is perfect for what the game is. And I think there's somewhere else. I think above there it's going to ask why. Somebody else asked why we went here instead of somewhere else. Different games are created for different reasons. And you join them for different reasons. All star seeds, I guarantee you. Star seeds, as I identify them, came here to help Gaia take the pressure off of that low density of third dimension to help her get up to 5D where she wanted to go. Mainly because she agreed to come and play the role of this planet, but she agreed to a certain amount of time. But when the time got there and she was going to come back out of it, just like you going on a trip, she was going on a trip and coming out. She's got other things to do. She's just like you, only instead of playing a human body, she's playing a planet. That's all. That's the only difference. It's the only difference, guys. Just relax about this bigger and smaller thing. It's the only difference. Okay, but when the time came, the beings here asked her to stay longer, and she agreed. Now, in her idea of longer is much different than your idea of longer. But she did push it to the very end, and she said, okay, I'm done. And now she has got something else she wants to go do, since she's coming out of this much faster than what she had originally planned. She was going to come out about the way she came in, which was pretty slow and cautiously. Now she decided to stay longer in the low density and let them try to hit low, low 3D, which they did. We did. Everyone did. And now she's coming up a lot faster. For that, she made a call. Starseeds came to stand on her and help her do that. That's why Starseeds came. Humans... People that identify as humans, long-term, short-term, medium-term, they came for the contrast. And as I've said before, you've got to think of it like this. The same reason that people get in line for a very, very scary roller coaster ride. Or the same reason people jump out of helicopters and snowboard down the side of mountains. Or climb up Mount Everest. It, they, they know when they get ready to do these things that they're going to be scary. That they're going to hurt. That they could possibly die. But they do it for the excitement. This game is built on that concept. Entities come for the experience and the excitement of this extremely challenging and very, very, very contrast-filled game. Now, you may not understand that in the moment. Even people who are 
deep into it won't understand it in the moment. But if they understood it, then it wouldn't be exciting anymore. If they remembered that they were a god and they could blink out of it, it wouldn't be exciting anymore. The whole concept is for it to appear to be extremely dangerous and fraught, filled with all kinds of difficult circumstances. That's the whole point of the game. Think video game. It's like, okay, um, people say, well, why do they do it? The same reason people go to see movies that are full of action and excitement and sci-fi rather than everybody going to girly chicks. As a matter of fact, the girly chicks, the happy, happy, joy, joy, girly chicks or family flicks people make fun of. Well, that's because people want the excitement. The entities come for the excitement. Now, Star Seeds, most of us aren't into that. We're into a different kind of gameplay, and that's fine. But the beings that come here, which is really a handful of beings in the scope of all that is, and all the beings that there are, they're into this sort of thing, which is good. Which is good. We get to add their experience to the whole. And that is awesome, because we all get to... Uh, experience it whenever we want to without actually having to go do it. So say thank you to them for creating such an awesomely intense roller coaster ride. Well, us, everybody, experienced it and created it because we're all one, but you know what I mean. Okay, now what else? Let's see, the game is so messed up. Religious type thinking never made any sense to me. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to a lot of star seeds, which is why I was an atheist and in jeopardy of eternal torment and suffering that there would be just a book that we have happened to read and go to some study group to understand to help us avoid it. Okay. And there is no book. There will never be a book. And that's the problem. Everybody wants a book to get out of this. And what I continue to tell you is there will never be a book. You are each individual gods that are very, very different from each other. And you want it that way. Uh, we don't repeat ourselves because we're all one. So the way that you got here and the way that you'll get out of here will be unique to you. And the good news is... If you don't figure it out, so what? Your body will die. You'll go to the other side. And trust me, all star seeds will not reincarnate in any way. They will leave the game and you'll go on to what you were doing before. And you'll look back at this and go, oh, that was interesting. And move on. This is a blip in your experience. Even if you're a human and you've done this or do this for a trillion lifetimes. Trillion lifetimes. It's still, when you leave and you turn around, it'll be a blip in your existence. Because you always have been and you always will exist. And that's the truth. Period. <laughs> Alright, next. Okay, let's go up here. Okay, John Otto. I haven't read this before, so I'm just reading it now. I have a question about UFOs. Throughout my life, I've been looking at stars at night. Classic starseed move. All of us are big stargazers because we're longing to go home. <laughs> yeah, anyway, up and out, up and out. I know what planes and satellites look like at night. I live on a farm, so I see the stars clearly. Lately, I've been very surprised about seeing lights that move up and down in zigzag shapes. I know deep down there are UFOs. I want to know as we move from 4D to 5D, will the aliens try and collect us like you said? Well, yeah, otherwise I wouldn't have said it. Silly John. Should we avoid contact if we want to stay with the Earth? Um, you're probably going to have a hard time avoiding contact with them. You can have contact just the same as you would a human being, because most humans... Um, are not vibrating where you are too. It's just don't get caught up in their games. That's that's the trick. You can watch them. You can look at them. You can even say hello. Just they're going to try to convince you that their way, just like humans do, they're going to do the same thing. It's just that the geckos are going to have all of these cool machines that can do all kinds of things that might make it appear that your life will become easier if you do what they want you to do. Uh, 
So they may have a food replicator, so you don't have to worry about food anymore. They might have free energy device that they can give you. But, and you, shoot, I would take the food replicator and the energy device. I would just walk away from them and say, thank you very much and leave. Um, if you can do that, if you can get away with it. Just don't get caught up in, because they're going to tease you with something and then they're going to, you know, do you want to ride in the spaceship and then they won't bring you back. Just don't trust them. Just don't, don't trust them. They're 4D entities. And as a general rule in Earth this whole time, if somebody's giving you something, they want something in return. Well, it's that way in spades in 4D. Uh, so just, you know, just stay in yourself and don't fall for any of them. Pigeons, pigeons are, are trickier, guys, because the pigeons will show up and look very angelic, like... Like they're better than you are. And they will dump some love vibes on you. And you will believe that they were are a god. Or they are an angel. And that you you will... Just all I can do is tell you. You are not ready for that. You will hit your knees with the, the overwhelming feelings of love. Of course it's not real love. But um, on one hand the geckos will make your life easier. With all kinds of gadgets and, and gidgets. On the pigeon side, they'll overwhelm you with emotions that you've searched for and wanted your whole life. So, um, avoid them. I think avoid is the wrong word because that implies you need to be afraid of them. You just need to stay in your God self whenever you're dealing with them. Uh, you're more than like, w welcome to just interact with them. I personally am not getting in on any spaceship. And I've already felt love that makes the pigeon love pale in comparison but most people have not so just i just want you to to know that um if you're in your true self you'll know the difference you'll know when they're trying to deceive you if you stay in your in yourself and you know yourself well um ultimately if you end up getting whisked away on a spaceship don't worry about it everything will be fine you you're not gonna get lost in this game um, ultimately, it was something that you want to do. If you get caught up in the pigeons game, don't worry about it. Eventually, you will die and leave the game. And dying is a good thing, not a bad thing. It's awesome. Um, let's see. I want to... Blah, blah, blah. Should we avoid context? Also, have you heard about the event... And what is your thoughts on there being a massive solar flare that is predicted to happen? Every prediction of end of the world, worries, problems, there is a timeline that that occurs. So if you worry about it, you pretty much are guaranteed that you're going to go to that timeline. Including multiple zombie ends, asteroids, um, a Jesus coming down and people floating up to him, rapture. Uh, everything that you've ever can imagine that people have like thought about, there are those scenarios uh, as Gaia leaves. So you choose which one you want to experience. It's always been your choice. Uh, I've also noticed the amount of stars in the sky seem to have increased and I am starting to notice more colors. It is only 5D... Let's see. Let's see. Uh, massive love solar Notice more colors. Is only a small percentage of people going to 5D? No, a small percentage of people are not going to 5D. But when they go to 5D and how they go to 5D is completely different. So the amount of humans that are going to 5D at the rate that I am presently going to myself is small but i'm moving wicked fast and most people don't do that um long-term humans depending upon whether or not they're tr they're trying to get out back out of the game and they've already spent a lot of time <laughs> ultimately the answer is that we are gods doing whatever the heck we want to do so there is no uh, predictable amount of people there's there's you got to stop thinking in 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 thoughts of are a lot of people doing this or a lot of people doing that because it's not relevant it's just not relevant to you you're an individual god doing your your own thing and 
as a God self, you don't care what other people are doing. You really don't. So if uh, what it looks like the whole 90% of the world is 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 looking like it's following the solar flare thing, then you just kind of go, okay, that's fine. It has nothing to do with you. That's the problem with humans. Is what happened is they came down to 3D. You were we were sent deep into amnesia, and what happened is we started looking to others for um, whether or not we're doing things right or not, and we started following others. Now, this whole thing, when it was started, the whole thing, every game is built to be fun, but what happened is when we got to be more and more amnesia, we started caring more and more about what other people were doing and thinking, and we quit. That made us even deeper in amnesia of who we are, which was the point. So it was done exactly as it was supposed to. But coming out of it, what other people doing and what other people think and what their experiences become less and less important to you. Less and less important. Because it has nothing to do with you. You are God. You control exactly what happens to you. And if everyone around you turns left and you want to turn right you just turn right and go by so what has nothing to do with it so i just don't i don't follow those kinds of things i don't generally look to see who is moving at my rate who who is at my vibration um i am very very focused on getting to 5d or dying I really don't care which comes first, but that is my primary goal. I am standing on the earth, and well, the primary goal is help Gaia. So as long as I'm helping Gaia, I'll be standing on this planet. I have no desire to get on a spaceship or go with the pigeons or the geckos. I can identify them very quickly and easily. That's just a bigger and a different game, just like... Um, the money game, the religion game, the health game, the uh, all of those games here, geckos and the pigeons have a whole bunch more of them, and I don't, I didn't like playing them here, and I don't want to play with them there, so I'm not interested in that. Um, I want to help Gaia until she gets up, and you know, if I'm supposed to help Gaia and stay with her in 5D, so be it. But at least I want to get up to 5D where I can tolerate it better because I just don't tolerate the low densities very well. Uh, it's just not my gig. No, I'm not saying it's not cool. 3D is awesome for those that like to play there. It's just not my thing. Most people that enjoy thick physical densities would not find what I normally do as an entity fun either. And that's the way it was meant to be because we're all one. We're supposed to be doing different things. So what other people are doing really isn't relevant at all. Now, if you want to watch them like you would a movie or a game, then you just watch them. But you don't judge as to how many people or what the likelihood is. There's just as much. For an individual god, there's a 100% likelihood that they'll be on the planet for a solar flare that destroys everything because they choose that timeline. For me, there's a 0% chance that I'll be on that timeline. Zero. So, what is the chance? Well, it depends upon the the individual creator God as to which one they'll be on. Um, I know a lot of religious people, I was raised religious, that there is a 100% uh, likelihood that they will be on the planet during a rapture-type scenario because they've spent decades um, worrying about it and thinking about it. So, there's a 100% chance that's what they'll experience. But that has nothing to do with me. And there's so many entities on this planet that how many entities will be there? Um, I know for a fact that when I get to 5D, there are going to be people that were low, low, low that will pop up. The last second, they'll pop up and be right next to me. I know that. I've seen it. And so I just, I, I just don't care. I don't care what other people are doing. Uh, I know that they're going to do exactly what they need to do and what they're going to do for their experience, and that's awesome. Okay, and let's see, I have also been thinking and emotionally wishing going to 5D as my way. Okay, we'll stop there. Be careful of your words, guys. I know it's tricky, but be careful of your words. They have vibration behind them. 
Wishing is not a good word. You don't want to use wishing ever, ever. And this is a good time for me to, in, in this statement right here, and I know you're used to using this word, but wish, the vibration is you're always wishing for something that's beyond your reach. So that's the reason why I say fake it until you make it. Know that you're there. You're there already. And it'll take you there. Wish, and you'll always it'll always be outside your your grasp, always, because you're sending a vibration of wanting something you can't have. That's the reason why. And I know that's hard with linear time thinking, but you have to know, like you know, like you know, that you're already there, and it's an illusion that you're not. Okay. All right. Back to emotionally wishing. Going to 5D is my way to send energy to be on a 5D timeline a lot. Does wishing for something to happen part of law of attraction? And I think I just covered that. It is a law of attraction. You don't want to do it because it's like needing or wanting. Those are those are going to keep vibrations with law of attraction. That's going to keep that stuff right outside your grasp. You and the law of attraction people tell you this is that if you I think I've seen this. If you want a new car, you've got to like go get in the car drive the car, believe that it's your car, and get in the house, sit in the house, believe that it is already your house. That is very, very true, because you've got to have the vibration of it. You've already got it to get to the timeline where you've already got it. Yeah, I know. Almost impossible to do. Uh, Long-term humans can do it easier than a star seed. Star seed, I'm just like, for the first place, I couldn't care less about the car and the house to begin with or the money. Um, I want, you know, I want, you know, magic. I want 5D. So that's probably the reason why I've not been successful in the rest of the stuff. Because I go, oh, I don't really care. Uh, I don't care about the stuff that they call on. So, yeah, I'm doing a lot better with getting the things that I want. So you got to be real clear about what you really want. Because if you go after things that other people go after, like a lot of money, big house, new car, and it's not really what you want, you'll never get it to begin with because it's not really what you want. So you have to decide what you really want. And then take out the wishing, the needing, the wanting thing. And you've got to know that uh, you've already got it. Now it's just a process of... Like, like you've already... Think um, binoculars, and you're bird watching, and you've got to know that that bird is already within the lens of that of that um, binoculars. Now it's just a matter of twisting and turning the knobs until you bring it into focus. It's already there. You've already found the the bird. Now you just need to make it clearer. Yeah, that's a pretty good analogy. I like that. Uh, I know that you have to pretend to know something will happen in order to attract it to happen. Know something will happen. Again, you use will again. You have to pretend to know something will. But see the words you used? Pretend. You can't pretend. And you that something will. That always keeps it in the future. See how tricky the words are? But you understand, to get us into this linear time space amnesia, that's how tricky it had to be to get a, a, a god to forget the power that it has so to come back out you have to get really really good at this you have to know that pretend won't work because it will always you don't believe that it's real pretend is pretending it's not real so you got to get rid of pretend you got to something will will happen that implies that it's in the future you never get there so watch your words guys watch your words Okay, now we're going to go to Cindy Fitzgerald, and her question is, Hi, Naya, just wondering, do we really have guardian angels? Um, I don't call them guardian angels because angels are very 4D, and they're pigeons, and I call the angels pigeons, and they're the religious part of 4D. Uh, what I call them is my pub friends, and you... Are always you always have an aspect of you that's above you, which I would ultimately classify as my guardian angel, if I was going to call it anything. Mostly, I just call it me. But I do you do have pub friends, so I would refer you to my videos talking about pub friends. Should be in the title. If you have any questions about that, be sure and ask me. 
Um, if you call on a guardian angel, yeah, you will. But these are pigeons, and they're 4D characters, and they will sap all your energy and use you. Just like all religions have up until this point, or most of the religions, 3D religions up to this point, they want you to follow. They're going to sap all your energy, time, space, money, everything from you, okay? So I don't want a guardian angel. I've got my pup friends and I've got um, myself. You're a god. You don't need anything. Okay, and I guess that's it. And this is 45 minutes long, so I'm going to cut it off. Uh, I love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.